Hi, my Yarny friends. My name is Crystal, and I'm on here today to share with you a um, some happy mail that I received to do a book review on the Amigurami book. And at the end, I'm going to... I don't know what to call it. <laughs> but at the end, it isn't yarn related. So after the book review, if you don't want to be here for that, that's okay. So um, I received this maybe two months ago. I'm just very, very behind on vlogs. I even filmed a vlog of we went antique thrift store shopping and I got all this footage from that and I still haven't done that and that was over a month ago. <laughs> but um, but I really, really wanted to share this with you um, and to do a book review. So I received some happy mail from Marlisha at Pin, Hook, and Needle Podcast. This is a mother-daughter team. They have been on YouTube for 10 years now. Isn't that exciting? And um, her and I, on occasion, send each other some happy mail. I guess tag I'm it. <laughs> And so, but it's like, you know, every nine months to a year, well, it's, you know, we're, we're slow, but that's okay, right? It's just the thought and it's just for fun. And, um, she sent me this cute card that she made and, um, she loves owls and it has a sweet note in there and, um, one of the items was this crochet book right here. And she said that she probably would never make anything from it. So she thought she would send it to me. And so this is the book that I'm going to review. But first I'm going to show you um, what else she sent to me. She sent me some Knicks, Knit Picks Brava Sport yarn. I love this yarn. <laughs> I love this. I have, I have, I don't know if it's Knit Picks. It's Wee Crochet, but it might be the same. Anyway, I, I love this yarn. It is a sport weight yarn. It is 100% premium acrylic. It's 230, I mean, <laughs> 273 yards. I flipped those numbers. How weird. Um... Machine wash, tumble dry. It is a two weight yarn. It the color weight is eggplant. This is um, the yarn or the similar yarn that I used to make Eleni and um, Lily those circle vests that I made them. And then she gave me this color, and this is Brava worsted. That was sport. This colorway is Peacock. Isn't that pretty? And then this is Worsted. I love this color. It's very rich. It's a beautiful color. It is called Hunter. I wish you could... It doesn't show up. It's, it's darker, richer than that. Very, very beautiful green. And then she knew I was wanting oranges. And she gave me two oranges. Look at this. Isn't this a pretty orange? That one's showing up more true to color. Isn't that odd? This colorway is orange. <laughs> That's shocking, huh? Right? It's orange. <laughs> so look at this beautiful yarn. Marlisha, I love this happy mail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm so... Ah! Yarn down. I'm sorry I'm so late doing this vlog, but um, but you understand. I, I know that you understand. I want to um, review the book that you gave me. I'm really, really excited. Now, I have seen this book on Amazon, and it did not honestly catch my eye. I was, you know, um, I don't think this does it justice. And um, I'm going to show you all the different rag dolls that you can make. But I made one and I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> 
and then we're gonna flip through the book when I'm done. So which one did I make? I made this guy. <laughs> Isn't he super duper cute? I just love this yarn. I, just these colors go well, and I'll sh share with you what I used. So I really enjoyed it. I did this shaping a little bit different. They had you do it a triangular shape, and I kind of wanted to curve it in. That's the only thing I did different. For your first one, and if you're new to Amigurami, I highly suggest you don't do one like this. It, I even got a little bit confused. So, um, but if you're new to Amigurami, this is, uh, I think a good beginner one because this is just, um, double crochets. I found it a very simple, easy pattern. So you're really only doing the head. You do have to sew these on, but again, these are very simple. I found it it, it an easy make except for this this part was a little bit confusing but they have many where you don't have to do that um the yarn i used for this fluffy stuff that you can't get it anymore i don't know why they they stopped doing it and it was the premier just yarn in the flowers and i don't remember how much it took i don't know if it you know, I have a partial skein. I don't know if it took one and a half, two and a half. I don't remember. It's been that long. But I used this yarn. Um, I just used some scrap white. And then I used this big twist value in the color orange. And I think Tara Lynn gave me this. <gasps> I made, can I share? Okay, I'm going to squirrel. I'm going to squirrel for just a moment because I'm so, so excited. Remember, I had told you, and I forgot that this was sitting over here. I wanted to make labels up where I could just write people's names and the date and the, like, the month and the year on there. So then I would remember, as I was using the skein, who gave it to me. And I finally was able to do that today. You want to see what I did? Now i got to put one on there for that. This is what I made. So it says, with love from, and then I write their name, the month, and the date. Isn't that cute? I forgot a sticker. <laughs> so I used a sheet of this Avery um, address label. It is the 8160. It is one inch by two and five eighths of an inch. Um... I, my first thought was I was going to um, design it like um, on my computer and then print it out. But I just, that just wasn't going to happen. I had to get my laptop open. This was just easier for me to write it out. Well, first I tried to stamp, but I don't have those by me. Um, but the stamp was even a pain. This was easier just to write it out and to put a sticker on it. And I actually have one done with Tara Lynn's name, but not the month and stuff. So I just need to write the month and 2020 on here. And so then I peel it, I take it off, and I find a good spot that I don't want to hide any information that's important. And then, boom! So I just need to write her the um, month and the year. I think this was June 2020. So I've been doing that. I, I wonder if you can see. Uh, nope. Nope, you can't see over. I actually have a cubby with um, yarn from my yarny friends. So I finally did it. Isn't that cute? I think it's such a great idea. Then when you go to use the yarn, you remember who gave it to you. So I think I said that already. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing that. And now I have, I have them right here. So whenever I open yarn, like this yarn, I'll put, um, I need to write Marlisha's name. I don't know if I'll know the right month but that doesn't matter it can be roughly the right month and year so then when I go to use it I know when I got it what year from who Yay! 
So I want to go over this book. I want to show you the different people that you can make. I fell in love and I really, really want to make more out of this book. As I went, they have, um, they show you like different sizes by what size yarn you use, how big they come out, what they look like. I thought that was a fabulous idea. They have some sweet photos in here. That's, and they give you tips and tricks, which I really like. They give you skill levels. So that's really good right there. Different skill levels. So then you'll know. I did it. Um, it tells you basic in assembly instructions. I really like that. So look at this sweet photo. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so precious. <laughs> So the first one is a bunny. And what I really, really like about this, that's super duper cute, and I think kids will really like the rag doll, is they have a baby bunny. So you have a mom or a dad bunny and a baby bunny. <laughs> so a lot of these in here, hopefully I didn't just give away the pattern. So let me try to hide some of this. So they have a, oh no. They have a crocodile. Cute. Then they have a baby crocodile. Oh, this isn't the pattern. I guess it's, then they have a baby crocodile. Isn't that such a great idea? They have, oh no. Then they have a dog, and then you can make a baby dog, and they actually have dresses. I wish there was an easier way to show these without giving away the pattern. But you can make this little dog family with the clothes. It even has clothes for the dog family. So you have a dog and a puppy dog. And then you have this adorable fox. Look at that fox. Then you have, what's a baby fox? A kit? Is that right? Or am I totally wrong? Yeah, it's a kit. <laughs> See, this is easier. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love these. They're so much cuter when you see them individually like this. Look at the frog. Oh my gosh. Try not to show the baby frog. Let's see. The baby frog. Oh my gosh. They're so cute. There's a hippo. I don't know. I got to find out a trick to show these. A hippo calf. <laughs> it's harder than you think. Oh, this is one of my favorites. This is one of my favorites. It's a kangaroo. It has a baby kangaroo with a pocket. <laughs> I got to make that one. I, I got to make that. <laughs> and then, oh my goodness, this one's adorable. You got a monkey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then you have a baby monkey. Ta da! lot of patterns. You have an owl and an owlet, I believe, is a baby owl. That one's going to be advanced, <laughs> but so cute. You have, you have, there's a lot of patterns. Then you have the penguin that I showed you, and then the baby penguin to go with it. 
that I might make someday. I wish I would have made a baby one to show you the size difference. They have a sheep. You don't get to see his whole body, but it's the same body, the triangular. You have the baby sheep. So cute. Then, I'm not done. There's more patterns. Then at the, the, the back of the book, they have other ones, and these ones don't have um, babies to go with it. Look at that cat, a calico cat. Or you can make any cat you want. And then they have an elephant. Oh my goodness. They have a horse. Look at that. That's a lot of patterns. They have, I'm not done. <laughs> They have a mouse sitting at the table <laughs> eating a cupcake. They have a panda. Isn't that cute? They have a princess. Look at her. Now let me show you this. This is a better photo. So cute. A little doll. And then... Oh, no, I'm not done. They have a pug. So super cute. And then... Oh, my gosh. I love this one. They have a robot. Don't you love the robot? And then what set is it is com isn't well I can't speak. <laughs> what set isn't complete? <laughs> I don't think I'm saying that right. Without a unicorn. So cute. And then the last one are clothes. I love that idea. Some little closes. I think it's for the baby ones. I'm not sure. So I do love this book. The instructions were easy to follow. Um, I didn't, the only thing I struggled with, but I always kind of do is these kind of stitches. But if it was just a solid head, that would have gone smoothly. That was the only issue I had. Once you get a, in a rhythm, of increasing and decreasing. I actually, because you always increase at the um, last stitch of your last increase here and here. So I just put markers there and I wouldn't where my last increase was. So I would just crochet and where the marker was, I would add an increase. Just crochet away without ca counting. But only after I got into the rhythm of it. After I was a few rows in, I was I noticed that you always increased at the last increase, the last stitch. You know, you have two and an increase to the second one. So then that made it easier to where I didn't have to pay attention. So I highly recommend that. Loved it. I loved it. So um, that's everything that is crochet related. So if you're just here for the crochet goodness, thank you for being here. The next thing I'm going to go into and um, have a hot flash. Hold on, guys. <laughs> um, the next thing I'm going to go into, this is about Marlisha, the lady that gave me the um, this book and the yarn. Her daughter Talia has EDS. Um, Elo's Dan Eler Elo's Danlos sent I can't say it properly, <laughs> but I'll put it right here. She has EDS and it is a connective tissue disorder. And she also has POTS like me, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And um they kind of go hand in hand. I do have a connective tissue disorder too, um, possibly EDS, but because I was older when I got diagnosed and my, my thumb wasn't hypermobile, then 
they've changed their criteria when I went looking about eight years ago. They're just learning more and more. So I'm on here today because um, to explain to you a bit what a connective tissue disorder is and to ask you a favor if you're able. Um, Talia needs to have surgery. She has, it is a complication of EDS. She has something called tethered cord syndrome and um, it is affecting her walking and she's um, struggling to walk. She cannot walk properly. There is a little video of her struggling to walk but it's worse and it will get worse until she can't walk. So she needs a surgery to untether these cords that's in her spine. She has had surgery on her neck um, because of uh, when you have weakened ligaments and um, and my brain's not wanting to function joints. You get cranial instability. It's called, um, I don't remember the name of it. If I can find it, I'll put right here it right here but she had to have surgery to strengthen that and um but so unfortunately her insurance company will not cover this surgery which blows my mind and she has to have it out of state and they won't cover anything because she's out of state because her surgeon, her neurosurgeon, is an expert in this field and he's the one that did her neck surgery and they're messing with her spine. So you want somebody who's an expert and who's done this before messing with your spine. So she has a, um, it's called Give, Send, Go. It's like GoFundMe, but it's better because she gets 100% of it. And if you're not able to donate anything, you can pray. There's a button that says you'll be praying for her. And she needs all the prayers you can get. And, um, and also, other ways to support her would be subscribing to her channel, um, playing, like when you sleep, her vlogs to earn money that way. And um, also her mother is a yarn dyer. And after I say all this, I'm going to talk more about EDS and I'm going to show you something personal. I'm going to share with you something personal. So um, her mother dyes yarn and she has an Etsy shop and she is having mystery yarn and uh, um, as much as the proceeds as she can because she's got to cover the cost of the dyeing the yarn and the skein, but all the money she makes, like the extra, is going towards her daughter and going towards the surgery. So that's another way that you could help support this. And I'm going to show you some of the yarns that I um, have bought. So these are a couple of the yarns. So in a mystery yarn, you could maybe get one of these. This, I chose DK. You can choose your size. You can choose if you want the sparkle in it or not. Um, and this is Superwash Merino with Nylon. This is a fingering yarn. Look at that beauty. Isn't that gorgeous? You could get that. Um, this is a fine Superwash Merino. Or look at this purple beauty. So you don't know what it will be, and um, and there and then there's this beauty right here, and she had many has many others. Uh, you could just it's random, it's a mystery. So that's a fun way to raise money as well. So I will be linking that shop in the description box below, and um, and I want to share some numbers with you before I share you share with you something personal about. A connective tissue tissue disorder. Um, she needs to raise sixty five thousand dollars, which is mind blowing. It's out of pocket, so they she's going to be paying on this for a very long time. I wanted to try to do maybe a um, 
like a raffle and raffle off a couple of my amigurumi. I'm just too sick. I just can't um, can't do it. So instead, I'm just asking if you can give whatever you can give. It does make a difference. If it's only five dollars, it makes a difference. And I am a number cruncher. And um. I wrote some ways, to, um, I wrote some just numbers. I just crunched some numbers because I love numbers. So she needs, I'm just going to round up. So she's already raised 5000 a little over 5000 so she needs 60000 So if every if 12,000 people gave $5, that would raise the money. Or if 6,000 people gave ten dollars that would raise the money or if three thousand people gave twenty dollars that would raise the money she needs if one thousand two hundred people gave fifty dollars that would raise the money she needs or if six hundred people gave a hundred dollars it would raise the money. Isn't that mind-blowing? 600 people, only if they could afford that. I mean, that's a lot of money. But I'm just crunching the numbers, and I'm just mind-blown by how, like, if when people come together, the impact that they could have. But I was thinking, there is, so $5, there's 12,000 crocheters out there. I may not have that on my channel, but if everybody spread the word and did skeins of love, that's what I was thinking of, skeins of love. I bought these skeins for two forty dollars each. So basically for $5, it only takes two skeins or a latte, right? If you go out and buy coffee, um... It's five, it, you know, it's just five dollars and it could benefit somebody greatly. Now, I know there's lots of people that don't even have five dollars, but they could they would appreciate your prayers or you subscribing to their channel. Um, every little bit helps. If you're a YouTuber, you could spread the word, that's wonderful. I wish that I was healthier, that I could do, um, you know, like for Sharon, they, the YouTubers got together and they raffled off stuff and they raised $25,000 for a wheelchair for her. Just amazing, this Yardy community and the power that they have. I wanted to explain to you a little bit how a connective dish, tissue disorder affects your body and and it's so hard to grasp. Like, how could that really affect your body? And what is a connective tissue disorder? So a connective tissue disorder is where your connective tissues, which is basically everything in your body, is weak. It is um, doesn't have the strength it needs. So I have my um, ligaments are too loose because they're not strong enough because of the connective tissue disorder. So that's why I have a lot of head and neck pain because they're too, too loosey-goosey. And um, my muscles have to compensate and tighten up to keep my body and my posture right. So my body's always so tight because it has to compensate for the loosed ligaments. My knees are, they look weird. They're very hypermobile and they, they cave in instead of like a lot of people have a nice curve to their knees. Mine look weird and have like indentions and um, they're getting worse because um, I'm bedridden. So I don't, I, I, I don't have the muscles anymore to compensate in my legs like I used to. So my knee pain's getting worse than what it used to be because um, my muscles can't compensate like they used to. But I'm going to share with you one personal and obvious sign of a connective tissue disorder because I had somebody say to me that um, my health problems are all in my head and doctors just want my money so they're just telling me that I have it but I have some proof 
that most people don't have that proves a connective tissue disorder. So, um, that I've never shared with you guys because, well, one, I don't wear tank tops. So I'm going to change real quick into a tank top and you'll see why. Hey guys, I'm back. I feel kind of weird wearing a tank top. I, uh, isn't that weird? So um, before I knew that I had a connective tissue disorder, um, and my doctors didn't know why this happened because they didn't know this would happened about 30 years ago I needed some skin removed from my arm right here and um, Because my skin was Weakened because of my connective tissue disorder at that time. I didn't know my skin burst away from the stitches so I was only supposed to have a scar that was like a kind of like a T, but because my skin was not strong enough because I have a connective tissue disorder, it my skin ripped away and pulled apart from the stitches because it couldn't hold it together like a normal person. So it's amazing that I had a C-section and I it's just amazing I had a c-section but I had a lot of scarring to compensate for it which caused some damage internally so this right here is what happens when you have a connective tissue disorder and my stitches burst away, my skin burst away from my stitches. A lot of people think it's a burn. I get a lot of stares when I wear a tank top. I never wore a tank top for 20 years until I met my husband because I was embarrassed by this. It's pretty bad. I don't know how well it's hurting my neck to look at you. <laughs> I'm going to turn back. I never wore a tank top for 20 years because I was embarrassed because I have a huge, horrible scar and people look. I had my husband, um, when we lived in these apartments, he, these women asked if my ex-husband did that to me. <laughs> Isn't that weird? And, um, but because of him, he made me confident in who I am and to not care about what other people think of me. So when people say to me that it's all in my head, I'm sorry, but that's just not all in your head. So that's my proof of a connective tissue disorder. And this is what Talia is battling. Um, it can be so bad that your blood vessels get too weak and you can die of an aneurysm because um, you're... you're blood vessels are connective tissue. Um, it's called vascular EDS. And um, so th this just kind of touches my heart. I, I, this is why I have POTS. This is why, um, probably why I have a lot of the health issues that I have. So I'm just asking if there's any way it possible that you can help Talia have this surgery because if she doesn't do it soon the damage will be irreversible it may not help her walk better but it could help her still be able to walk and so I'm gonna donate and call it skeins of love so if there's any way possible that you could donate or pray she needs prayers this is a scary time for her mom, for her dad, for her. She's having surgery on her spine. And um, it's so hard to ask. <laughs> anyway, I better, I better go. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, 
I love you guys, and I thank you. I thank you guys for being my friends. I thank you that I've never had to prove that I'm sick to you guys. You know, there's just been a few trolls out there that say mean stuff, but you guys, you know, that they don't know the truth. They don't know the story behind somebody's illness. They don't know what they're going through. They don't know what they're suffering. They don't know how bad it is. But you guys have never needed any proof. <laughs> a lot of you see it in my eyes or in my mannerisms or so. Anyway, I better go, you guys. Um, I love you guys so much. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.